Hi there and welcome to Harvard Talks. I'm Larissa Adams and today I'm joined by Harvard's media analyst Derek Terrington. How are you doing today Derek? I'm well thanks and yourself? Good, good thank you. So Derek you've had an extensive 30-year career with experience working at leading brokers and financial institutions and a little over 18 months ago you wrote a topical insight piece called Streamers versus Broadcasters and that details the slowing of the streaming growth in the North American market whilst UK broadcasters reported a strong advertising recovery. And then later on in 2022, many of the big streamers saw a big share price decline after Netflix released numbers with a significant loss in subscribers. So now we're back here to find out where the sector is starting the year off. So let's start off with the sector as a whole. What have we seen after the great correction of 2022? Well, we've seen a great sorting out into those companies which look to be long-term successes, and the other companies which are struggling, in effect, to catch up. Um, all the headlines will tell you, and it's hard to argue, that Netflix has really um, taken the crown here and really is total market leadership. Um, everybody else is investing heavily in content, but you have to wonder if they'll be ever able to catch up to Netflix, particularly as it's expensive to invest over a sustained period in good content. Okay. Well, um, many of the streaming giants are making big moves into gaming, gambling, mm. and content diversification, like you've just said. So mm. which company is standing out on top? Is it just Netflix? Because there seems to be a big emphasis on content from Disney, but Amazon Prime is right up there as well. Yeah, Netflix is the one that's in broadening its content offering. Um you get back to a simple definition of content. Uh, you know, it's not just movies and, uh, and and stories. It's it's sport. It's gaming. It's gambling. It, it's an entire entertainment offering to the consumer, and that's really what Netflix is driving at. And uh, I think that's why they've been able to hang on to, to consumers and start to grow their streaming audience. And this is a global business. It's not, you know. Um, as parochial as it used to be, so they're really in, they've got a strong enough balance sheet. They can invest heavily in content, and they'll continue to do so. But they also have a good judgment as to what people will watch and people will pay for. And um, I think you'll see them break away even further from the rest of the of the streamers. And what about the broadcasters? What resistance are they bringing to the mm. table? And what has happened with the advertising revenue streams? Well, in the UK, you've had both uh, ITV and STV uh, follow a, a three-pronged strategy um, to invest heavily in content production through their studios division and also to um, invest in their own digital offering to consumers. Um, that's going particularly well, I think. Um, ITVX you've got, and then um, you've got STV Player in Scotland. So um, those businesses are small at the moment, but they're growing quite quickly, and they do appeal to a local audience, which I think is their virtue. Although, of course, they will or can be viewed globally. Uh, and then the third leg is really to sustain the broadcast or linear television broadcasting, because that really is meat and drink for these people right right now. They all aim to become less dependent on broadcasting revenue. Um, but at the moment, that's, um, that, that's a difficult part of the equation because advertising is quite weak. And um, we've seen them warn clearly that UK advertising is um, in a, not in a healthy state. Um, but we've also seen Channel 4, for example, which is 100% dependent on advertising, that they've been cutting jobs. So it's, it's a, quite a difficult time if you've got significant broadcasting assets. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, do you foresee any big takeovers happening in space? Uh, not in the UK, no. Although in the US, we've got one big one which has been lined up. Um, you know, we've got Warners, um, which hasn't made much money recently. Uh, it made $1.5 billion out of Barbie, but that's just not enough. Um, so they um, are talking, apparently, to Paramount. And Paramount also has a good quality streaming business, but I think they're looking to combine the two. 
Um, but the um, Wall Street wasn't impressed because both companies have very high debt levels. And then both companies have significant uh, linear broadcast assets. And um, the market's not looking for that because they're, they're putting two and two together there doesn't always make four. So it's not like Netflix, which is not encumbered with any legacy businesses. Um, what you're talking about is the legacy businesses getting together to defend themselves. Right. And um, what would you say are the key differences between the US and UK streaming ground? Um, well, of course, in this country, we have the public service broadcasters, which really makes all the difference. Um, so our broadcasting uh, options are, are very strong. Um, you, you have the BBC as well, of course, with, with a huge slice, if not the dominant slice of, of viewing time. And um, I guess, though, that uh, there will, the, the debate around the BBC, just to divert slightly, uh, will always be um, unsettled because nobody knows what's going to happen with streaming. I mean, the, the message from all the activity, particularly in the US, is that streaming is the future. And um, streaming will take more and more audience. One day, maybe the BBC will be a streaming business, but um, that will be very difficult to to, um, to move into because at the moment with the BBC, you have a, a compulsory levy uh, in the form of your 150, £170 pounds a year. And to, to switch that across to a, a voluntary payment will be quite a difficult move, I would say. So it's the whole background, the whole um, industry is, is different in the UK. And of course, you've got quite aggressive uh, competition from all the streamers who, who like the UK market. And, um, and they know there's an appetite here for good drama and there's no language problem. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very tight market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to end off, what are the key metrics and market headwinds that investors should be looking at this year when looking at investing in these streaming and broadcasting giants? Well, in the UK, if you get the hint of advertising markets stabilizing and starting perhaps to inch ahead, that will be a big signal to investors who are, seem to buy into their um, streaming strategy but are, are, are terribly nervous about the state of advertising because. Um, it can drag revenue growth back quite a long way. Um, across uh, in America, um, Netflix, you saw how the share price bounced after the recent announcement. Um, people will continue to back them. But Disney is the one that um, is quite intriguing because there have been management disruption there. And there has been a, uh, an attempt by outsiders to actually get a seat on the board. Um, that seems to be in the past now, and the, the, um, the CEO of Disney knows where to invest. And it's it's a company which really is an entertainment op offering all round. And um, once their streaming business hits profits, which they think will be this year, then I think they will be a very formidable um, competitor all around, all together. Um, Amazon and uh, uh, Video, Amazon Prime, they they've got a lot of subscribers um, and um, they will keep growing. And first they attract people to prime and then they attract them to video prime. So it's some um, or prime video, I think I should say. And so, you know, they are building up their content assets too. And that's another serious competitor. Otherwise it looks like the rest are in catch up mode and I have a choice either to spend a lot more or to get out or possibly to amal amalgamate, but it's very difficult outside of those top, the, the top three. All right. Thank you so much, Derek. Thanks for that short but valuable update. Uh, it was really interesting. Um, to our viewers, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate your time. Please do share your comments below and hit the like button. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Harmon Talks next time. Thanks.